Everton drew 1-1 with Fulham at Goodison Park on Saturday. Beto with a late equaliser cancelling our former toffee Alex Awobi's strike for Fulham. Sean Dykes was asked his thoughts on the game. Um, I, I thought we weren't at it. I thought they were. I think they're a good outfit anyway. Um, but they were better than us on the night. Um, not by not by a long shot. We weren't in massive trouble. We weren't getting rings round round us or anything like that. But just the feel of the game. We never we never committed to either way of playing. If we were playing long, we never really got after it and, and chased the game and forced the game. And if we were playing short, we never really played with any kind of endeavour to go forwards with a purpose. Um, so I thought we were short where we have been. On the other hand, I mean, the balance of football is it, it lasts for 96 minutes on this occasion. And the mentality that I've asked the players to continue growing is that relentlessness. And I thought that was on show. Um, you know, changing players, changing the feel of the game. Quite obviously just going right, but we're playing forward onto their back line as many times as we can for the last 10 minutes by putting Keno up there. And it works. And sometimes that's what you've got to do to make sure you, you look after yourselves in the Premier League. And it's something that I've needed to do many times before. And I was pleased that it worked. There you go. It was great to see Beto get himself on the score sheet. Obviously, hasn't been given much game time this season. It always feels like he's given everything and wants to do really, really well about Beto. Uh, about Beto. I'm doing really, really well uh, when he's wearing an Everton shirt. It's that thing of when you watch him, you know, when you will someone to do the very best because it looks like he actually cares which goes a long way. So it was great to see him come off the bench and score a goal at the weekend. This is what Sean Dyche had to say about the goal. No, he has been he has been working hard. He's been working hard in training. The staff have been working hard with him, so they deserve credit as well, doing extras and bits and you know, showing him clips and various things, including myself. And his development curve has been a delayed one. You know, he didn't come into the game professionally for not so long ago in, in relative terms. And coming into the Premier League, I've said all along, it's different, you know, it's different, it's difficult, especially as a striker. Um, and I think he continues to work hard and he's got his rewards tonight. Just from, you know, the thing I keep saying to him, you don't have to be pure when you're a striker like you, but you have to be a handful and you have to be awkward and you have to grow in that. It's a real weapon, that. And I thought he was when he came on tonight. You know, it's... You can find different ways of operating to affect the opposition, and he certainly did, and I thought Keno did as well when he went up there. Yeah, great to see him score a goal, obviously. Listen, Dominic Alderloon is clearly the number one striker for Sean Dyke, but Beto can be a handful and can affect games when he comes on. It's up to him to keep working hard and see whether he can force his way into the starting eleven, or at least when he gets on the pitch, make sure that he does contribute like he did at the weekend. Uh, Sean Dyche was asked about the goal in his first season when he took the job as Everton manager, uh, that it was Premier League survival, and was asked whether or not his long-term aims have changed, or is that still, in fact, his goal right now? This is what the manager had to say about that one. It's outlined to me when I got the job. Um, it's, it changed radically. It was a lot worse than what I got told when I came in. I've, I've shared that with you before. So, if you look for it since then, we've, we've bought money in and spent less, and we've... we've reduce the wages significantly and we're developing players who are now worth probably a lot more than they were when I got in here. So they're the things at the outside of what I have to do and that's not a problem to me, that's just the challenge. But I've never lost sight as we discussed just recently, you've got to win games, that's my job, I'm the manager. You know, no one cares about the rest of it, I have to care about it because it's my job. But no one else cares, Everton's just want to win a game and we're just beginning to show signs we can win games and, and if we're not going to win we don't get beat and I think that's growing again. But we're always a work in progress. That's quite obvious. Couple of questions. Uh, Sean Dykes was also asked about his thoughts on Ashley Young, Michael Keane, and Beto, three players who have not always been in the starting lineup. This is what the manager had to say about that. Well, yeah, but you've got to remember, you don't even suck and unlikely from the outside. You know, the players respect him, but I certainly do. You know, no surprise to me, Young is form, because he's, he's mentally as tough a player as I've ever seen. I told you that at the beginning of the season when he was getting questioned. I said, no drama. He understands the nature of the game. He understands if he's not playing well, he gets a bit. And he understands when he's playing well, at least just respect him, which I do. And so do the players. And I think the fans do deep down as well. Kino's another one. He played for England. He's a very good player. It's just, uh, you know, question marks occur. That's the way it goes. But I thought he did well again tonight. Beto's learning and developing. Every time, you know, people get asked a question, I remind the players, it's part of your career. It's a pro you're a professional sportsman. You know, that's why I keep telling them it's not. Everyone wants a footballer. Every, every young player, right, wants to be a footballer. I said on your passport, it will say professional footballer. That's the difference. It's a profession. That's the bit you've got to learn. 
And them guys have learned that. And sometimes you get the hard bit and sometimes you get the easy bit. But whatever you do, you've got to come through it and build your own resilience as well as a team resilience. And we're on our way to building that team resilience again. It's been there before, it's come away, and then we're building it again now. Thank you. On to what is clearly the best thing about the football club at the moment, and that is Everton's new stadium. A germination blanket has now been laid down at Bramley Moor. This is to aid the uh, the seed that has been put down, help grow the grass. Uh, that's going to take two or three weeks, I think. Then that should really enhance uh, the growth of the grass. And then there will be a synthetic weave being put in it from there. But the stadium's looking absolutely brilliant. There was obviously breathtaking shots of it uh, on Friday, I think it might have been, uh, with the lights on. It looked unbelievable. And obviously, when the grass is there and we can see a pitch or semblance of a pitch, we'll, uh, we'll get excited all over again. It, it really is looking amazing down there now at the new stadium. And finally, Everton's under-21 side beat Liverpool on Saturday in the mini-derby. A brace from Omari Benjamin gave Everton a 2-0 victory away. Uh, and Everton's under-18 side beat Blackburn Rovers 3-1 with goals from Justin Clark, Braden Graham and George Morgan. So well done to the young lads there. Two great results. That is it for the news day. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't. See you later.